Hello everybody. In this video, we are going to define the upper and lower integrals for a bounded function. And before we do, let me just draw a little picture, give you some intuition maybe for, for what our goal is. So this is definitely not the most general picture we could draw, uh, but it should be good enough for our purposes. Uh, so let's say I have some function f drawn maybe like that. Let's make it a little more violent. Okay, boom. So there's my function f, and maybe it's defined over some interval a, b. Okay, and I would like to know, say, I don't know, the area under the curve. So what I might do is chop up this interval, right, in the domain into little pieces. There's my partition, yeah? So this here, right, that could be my x0 and an x1 and an x2 and an x3, etc., etc., etc. Okay, b here would be x7, and then this little piece at the bottom, that would be i1, and this would be i2, and so forth. Okay, so I've got my intervals. And now, what I could do on each of these intervals is to do, 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 draw a little line going up, and I could find the infimum, right? The infimum of f on, say, i1. The infimum is over here. And then I could compute the area, this guy down here. And then I could go over to I2, and I could find the infimum in I2. And it looks like it's on this right end point, so I think it's about that high. It's pretty, pretty symmetric there. And I could now fill this in. Okay, and I can compute, right, the value of, in each of these cases, the length, all right, of the I times the infimum of F on that interval. And I could go through and do this for the whole picture. All right. And if I did that, and I'll write this down in green, I would get what we called the lower sum for, so here our marked partition, we'll call x. Okay, this would be the lower sum for x. And this was, okay, I added up. In this case, I have seven of these things. So k would go from one to seven. I would have the infimum of f on the interval ik times the length of the interval ik. Okay, I keep going. I also could find the upper sum, right? And I would do that by, well, I come over here and I'm going to take the supremum on each of these intervals. So, okay, if I do that, then I get this nice blue. Maybe I'll go the other way here. Da, da, da. Over here, the supremum is up here. So I'm going to get a much taller rectangle. Okay, and so now I get this bigger thing. I come over here, da, 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 and up. Looks like that's going to be the supremum is on that end. And okay, so I can compute all of these. All right, so my upper sum then u f of x is going to be the same thing, except instead of the infimum, I take the supremum of the values of f on i k. All right, now what should be clear from this picture is that when I compute the lower sum is that it is a bad estimate of the area under f. It's missing a whole bunch of stuff. And when I take the upper sum, it is a bad estimate. It's got way too much stuff. Okay? But there's a big difference. The green, the lower sum, is an underestimate. And the blue is an overestimate. We'll get this in blue. The blue is an overestimate. So I've got green underestimates, and I've got blue overestimates. Now, if I change the partition, so I use different i's, right, different x's, then you expect to, again, get an underestimate from the greens and an overestimate from the blues. And whether that is a better or worse under or overestimate just depends on how we change the partition. However, what I could do is consider all possible underestimates and all possible overestimates. And when I do that, I look at all possible, say, underestimates, the biggest one, right, the biggest of all the underestimates should be about as good as I can do, right? At least from below. And the biggest of all the overestimates should be about as good as I can do, at least, not the biggest, the, the least of all the overestimates, 
should be as good as I can do from above. The problem with that precisely is that if I look at the collection of all underestimates, that may be some infinite set, right? There's, there's certainly an infinite number of partitions. And so the lower sum set, right, that, that could be infinite, in which case I can't guarantee that there is a maximum, or in this case, a, uh, yeah, a maximum lower sum, right? I don't know there's a biggest one. However, that's okay, because F is bounded, so this LF is going to be bounded. And so what I know is even if I can't find a biggest lower estimate or a biggest underestimate, I can take the supremum of all of those underestimates, right? The supremum is our way of fixing the situation where we don't have a maximum. And so this is how we're going to define the lower integral of the function. So the notation will be, we're going to write down what you've probably seen before, integral x goes from a to b, but I put a little line underneath and that tells me this is the lower integral. Okay, and I'm going to write f dx. Okay, so that's our notation for the lower integral. Of course, we have all of our normal assumptions here. Our f is some function from a, b to r, and it should be a bounded function so that all these suprema and infima we want to talk about are going to exist. Okay, and so what do I do? I take the supremum of all the lower sums. Okay, so here I'm taking the supremum over all possible x's. And this is what we call the lower integral of f on a, b. Okay, so this is the biggest of all of the underestimates, or at least the supremum of all of the underestimates. Okay? And if I want to do the upper integral, well, all right, fine. I write the same thing, only now the line will go on top. And because I'm looking at overestimates, I want to get sort of the smallest of all those. I can't do exactly the smallest because it may not exist, but I can certainly take the infimum of all of the upper estimates or overestimates. All right, so the upper integral will be the infimum of the upper sums. The lower integral will be the supremum of the lower sums, right? So, okay, there we go. Write this upper integral of f on a, b. All right, so there's our definition. And uh, I've been talking about the upper uh, integral and the lower integral as things that, well, okay, the the, uh, the lower integral, right? That's the in supremum of all the underestimates. So that should be something less than or equal to the area under the curve. And the upper integral, right? That should be the, uh, the, uh, the supremum, or rather the infimum of all the uh, upper sums, that should be greater than or equal to, right? The area under the curve. So it seems reasonable that the upper integral should always be at least as big as the lower integral. All right, but that's, while reasonable, that's something we're going to have to prove. So we're going to write this as a theorem, which is that lower integrals are less than or equal to upper integrals. Okay, so the supremum of all the underestimates is always less than or equal to the infimum of all the overestimates. All right, so let's uh, set up our notation. F is going to be a bounded function on AB. Okay, and then the claim is that if I compute the lower integral of F, this is less than or equal to the upper integral of F. All right, so let's do a proof. So first, uh, I'm going to take some uh, partition, right? So we'll let, uh, say, x be a partition of p, or of a, b, rather. And if I take any other partition, right? So if w is some other partition, then 
we know that the lower sum of x is going to be less than or equal to the upper sum of w. Okay, so we proved this in our last video. Okay, so what does that tell me? Well, that tells me that the lower sum is a lower bound for the set of all of the upper sums. So thus, LF of X is a lower bound for the set of all upper sums. So here, W runs through all of P. Okay, but if you are a lower bound for this set, then you are less than or equal to the greatest lower bound, which is the infimum. So this implies that the lower sum of x is less than or equal to the infimum over all w in P of uf of w. But this is precisely equal to the upper integral. Okay, so let's scroll back up quickly. You see, right, the upper integral was the infimum of all of the overestimates, of all of the upper sums. Okay, so we get that L of any, any x is always less than or equal to this upper integral. All right, but what that means is that the upper integral is greater than or equal to all of the lower sums. And so it is an upper bound on all the lower sums. So this implies that the upper integral is an upper bound for the set of all lower sums. Ah, but if you're an upper bound, then you must be at least as big as the supremum. So this implies that the upper integral is at least as big as the supremum over all x and p of the lower sums. But the supremum of the lower sums is precisely equal to the lower integral. And therefore, the upper integral is at least as big as the lower integral. Hey! That's what we wanted to prove. Beautiful. So let's do an example. All right. So uh, in our example, I want to use what's sometimes called Dirichlet's function. Um, this is going to be what's also called the characteristic function of the rationals. So I'm going to use this notation here, uh, also called the indicator function of the rationals. So uh, this is going to be a function, and uh, let's go from just 0 to 1, but we could define this uh, on any interval, but I'll just use 0 to 1 for now. And uh, what this function is going to do is if I input some rational number, it's going to return 1. And if I input an irrational number, it's going to return 0. Okay, so this function is called an indicator function because it indicates whether or not x is in the rationals or not. And I'd like to know if I can compute, let's say, the lower integral for this indicator function. All right, well, so the lower inter inter integral is going to be, let's see, it's going to be the supremum of all lower sums. So here w gets to run through all possible partitions, right, of the interval 0 to 1. All right, so let's see what happens. When I take the interval 0 to 1 and I break it up into little pieces, then I know that in each of these pieces I'm going to get both rational numbers and irrational numbers. Okay, fine. Why is that useful? Well, 
if I'm going to be computing the supremum of all the lower sums, I'm going to have to compute these lower sums. And let's recall, what is a lower sum? It's going to be some sum k goes from 1 to n, and I'm going to be taking the infimum of, in this case, my indicator function applied to whatever interval I'm looking at, and then multiplied by the length of the interval. Okay, but when I apply the indicator function to any interval, any interval is going to contain both rationals and irrational numbers. And so I'm only going to get two images, right? So this is actually equal to precisely the set 0, 1. And the infimum of the set 0, 1 is equal to 0, which means that the lower sum is just going to be a sum of 0 times the lengths. Well, those are all 0. So every single lower sum, no matter which partition I take, is going to be 0, which implies that the supremum over all possible partitions is going to be 0. All right, so we've computed the lower integral, and it turns out to be 0. All right, well, what about the upper integral? Can we compute that? So the upper integral is going to be the infimum over all upper sums. So again, w runs through all partitions. Okay, well, I need to know this upper sum formula again. And the upper sums, okay, this will be a sum from 1 to n, but now I take the supremum of my indicator function on each interval times the length of the interval. Ah, but I know, again, the image of the indicator function is 0, 1. The supremum is just 1. And so all I'm doing is adding up the lengths of the intervals. Well, I know the sum of the lengths of the intervals. They add up to 1. That's the length of the entire interval. And so the upper sum is 1, and it doesn't matter which partition I use. So we conclude the infimum of all the upper sums is just the infimum of the set containing 1, which is 1. All right, so we've computed the upper sum, and an easy observation is that the lower integral, or we computed the upper integral, the lower integral and the upper integral are not the same, right? The upper integral is 1, the lower integral is 0. That difference is going to motivate our definition for integrable, which will come in the next video. So we'll see you next time. So long, then.